Hey guys, and welcome back to another video on the Road Builder YouTube channel. Today, we're going to be making a fan drawn UGC item. If you guys would like to submit any items for me to make, go ahead and just DM me a picture on Discord. But today, we have this kind of a weird sci-fi futuristic headpiece and I thought this one would be a great one to pick because I don't really make sci-fi stuff like ever. All my stuff is very low poly cartoon kind of vibe just everything and I also made this cute little balloon hat. Uh, and I, I'm thinking about actually uploading this one to the catalog. I, you know, kept it in all of the requirements and everything. And I think it turned out pretty good. Like, you could definitely tell it's a, a balloon hat. So, it's pretty cool. Anyways, let's uh, kind of scoot that one out the way. We can, uh, well, let's name this uh, Flower Hat. There we go. And we will hide that one. And guys, today we're going to be working on this guy right here. Now, ideas on how to do this i think i'm gonna start with a cylinder and it kind of looks like a ufo off the side of this guy's head just uh slanted sideways so i'm gonna when i make that i'm gonna make it a a normal ufo and then i'll just turn it 90 degrees and then this piece uh of course we're gonna want a color on it but i'm not exactly sure how we can do the color if that makes sense because if we invert faces you still won't see the player's eye uh yeah I, I don't know that might just have to be just the lines like i really have no idea yet how we're gonna do that one but only one way to figure out and that is to start so we're gonna start with a cylinder definitely not 64 sides we can go to let's say 16 that should be uh should be good enough i suppose gonna raise this up to his head top right quick go into edit mode z wireframe and, uh, oh, whoa, 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 we need to be on face select. There we go. All right, so let's start this like this. Let me turn off proportional editing. And uh, I should probably start bringing the photos into Blender. All right, so here's the whole photo here. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of put it right there. <laughs> so now we can kind of uh, we can kind of look at it as well. So let's hop back into edit mode over here, and it looks like we're doing this bottom piece right here first. So all I'm gonna do is add two loop cuts and then scale those out, and that'll give us that bottom piece. And now we're gonna move on to this face above, right here, and work on this next kind of ring piece here. So we're gonna go extrude. Ooh, we should inset it first. So let's do that. We're going to inset it so it's not uh, right next to this one. And then we will extrude it a little bit and then do the same cut. Well, just one loop cut this time instead of two. Uh, maybe two. Yeah, we'll do two, but just make them a little bit smaller. So now we have something like this looking good. And then we have a dome over the top, but not a huge dome like a UFO would have. It's uh, more flat, more subtle. So to do that, let's see, uh, is it lined up or... Okay, so we should inset this again just a little bit. That should be all right. And then we're just going to extrude this up and do control B to bevel. Something like that should be a-okay. Grab this top face, move it down some, and then we're going to grab these and move them down some as well. And guys, we have our main shape here. Now we have to build these little probe things. He even has colors that he wants. So we're going to try our best. We're going to try our best here. All right. Probe guy things up next. So to make those. All right, guys, I am going to delete the picture from right here because it's like heavily distracting me. But to make those first, let's just shade smooth and auto smooth right here. That's going to help make this look quite a bit better. Uh, we may kind of work on it a little bit more too. I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with that yet. I also want to... I want to extrude this and scale it in again so it's just smoother on the top. See, now we don't have that huge flat face. It's just quite a bit more smooth. Now, let's bring in another cylinder. And for these, it looks like uh, they're just small kind of antennas. So we're going to need three of them up here. We'll go about this size. Grab this top face, move it up, scale it in, and then I think I'm just going to extrude this, add in two loop cuts, and then scale those so it makes like that ball on the top, and then shade smooth, auto smooth on that, and bring it on in. Now we want these to be like a, like the same distance, I guess, from each other, so we'll probably, uh, let's try this. Put one right here, then one directly on the center line, and then we'll do one more right here. Here it would be, right? One, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, so right here, guys. And now those are all pretty much the same distance apart. And we have that done. 
here's the uh, the image photo again. So we're working on this piece right here. Uh, up next, we need dots, basically, around the whole thing. So to do that, huh, uh, we'll bring in another cylinder. Boom. This can be like 12 sides. Doesn't need to be as big. Definitely has to get scaled down a lot. R90. All right. Here's how we're going to do it, boys. Scale it down, scale it down, scale it down. Very small. Perfect. Now SX to scale on the X axis. Make it stick out just like that. Maybe a little less SX. Bring them in. Something like this, guys. And then Shift D. We're going to do R90. So now we got those. We're going to press L on this to select linked. Shift D, R90. 45 now we got something like this and we could put them on every corner if we wanted all right so now we have one on every side guys i just kind of rinsed and repeated the same process uh these guys all right that's all one item good 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 then we have this guy as one item and we can make these as one item it's all gonna go together at the end but this is just to uh, kind of help keep myself organized. All right, so it looks like the main thing here is done. So let's go ahead, grab it all, and then uh, here, let me go to, uh, there we go, R90, okay, scale it down, and bring it to the side of the head here. Kind of lined up with the eye. We don't want it clipping into the head. It's going to kind of hover, I think. It is very, like, futuristic sci-fi, so I don't know if it should be touching the head, he did draw something here and here, but I can't tell what they are. So I, I don't know like how to how to make those. So I'm just kind of leaving them alone. Now we have this, okay? We're gonna have to move it up. Uh, no, because I want it to be centered. So we're gonna make the uh, the glass piece kind of come out, uh, forward and then over. And I have no idea how I want to get that done. So we're gonna start with a let's start with a plane. I think that's gonna be our best bet. R90. And then move this up by the face and get it made how we want it to be. Let's go into edit mode, go to our line select, grab this one right above the eye, grab this one a bit below where the eye would be, I'm gonna guess. I don't know why I... <laughs> Let me go to material preview, there we go. Now let's have this kind of right here, and this is gonna cut off right after that eye. Now, if we go to his drawing, it looks like this is gonna be a sharp angle, and this is going to be a curved one. So let's make sure we do that right and do it justice. So I think we're going to just drag the bottom vertice back just like this. And then this top one, we're going to do control shift B. And that will let us bevel the vertice here. And I'm thinking something like this should do. All right. Let's move this back towards the face more. Because I'm trying to figure out how to connect the two. Because if I put this all the way out here, that looks kind of ugly, right? Yeah, very. <laughs> so I guess what I'm going to do, I'm going to add two loop cuts, drag these back, and, uh, huh. No, that's dumb. That's dumb. Don't do that. We're going to extrude this line, okay? I think this is our best bet uh, for going about this. We're going to extrude the line on the y-axis, so EY. Just move it back to the head. And now we have something that looks like this. I do think, hmm, I think the side should be smaller. So we are going to add two loop cuts here. Did that work? Hello? There we go. Grab these. I don't want it this much smaller, but we're going to do a S and Z. Scale those apart from each other. And then we're going to grab this center line here. And now we can do E and Y just like this. E, Y. Oh gosh, I can't actually see it. There we go. Put that right there and now we have this kind of a vibe going on if we grab this we can bevel it no we can't hold on okay that's not gonna work let's bevel the corners i suppose or we can solidify i think that's what we'll do first let's solidify this so modifiers add a solidify modifier there we go it does not need to be too thick i think that's good enough for sure and now if we apply this modifier whoops apply it all right, and now we should be able to kind of make something happen here. I don't think this is going to look good. We could try, though. Uh, bevel. No. Uh, maybe. Maybe. And we could kind of fix this a little bit. Hold up. Grab this top line right here. Oh, my gosh. I missed it three times. <laughs> and then grab this bottom line. And let's drag these over a little bit. Huh. Let's grab this line and drag it over. I think that helped a little bit. It kind of looks all right. Uh, shade smooth and auto smooth. It'll help that little edge on the side. So we have this, but how do we take it to the next level? Also, this needs to be a bit more uh, centered on here, like up here. 
and then this would all have to come down some like like this I guess it, it's hard to match the drawing actually because there's not a it, it's not like true I guess I could say <laughs> but I think something like this definitely works I don't know how we're gonna get like a color in here I do want to see if I can move this over like that and then back some like this no nah. all right so I think our model wise we're done here okay there's not too too much more we could do uh, we could put this into here a little bit and uh, now we got to texture this thing so let me go ahead and group everything together with Control J. Whoa, not the dummy, bro. Yikes. There we go. And let's start texturing this thing and go with all of the colors that he wanted us to use. So up here is a blue hexagon, he said. So let's grab this and I'm going to just kind of project from view A, S. And he said blue. I'm thinking he's meaning like a cyan. This would be very, very bright because, yeah, it's uh like sci-fi stuff <laughs> so these guys right up here let's do l l and l he wanted those to be gray hold up so this is gray maybe this part and then the tips are yellow i'm gonna assume that's what he meant all right oh wait yeah yellow and then this is yellow so let's do the tips only so wireframe view i'm gonna go to face select and he wants these ones yellow right here so let's grab those Control plus, uh, no, no, control minus. We're just gonna have to grab this top row like this. There we go. And then he wants all of these yellow as well. So with that, you project from view. I'm gonna grab all of these, press G, move them into this, and then we can uh, just kind of scale this and make it yellow. I am gonna kind of shrink it down so it's not as harsh of a gradient. There we go. Uh, I should probably add my uh, texture to this too so we can watch it work, you know? image texture right there and a boom color grid so here's what we got so far guys up next we need to do the grays and it looks like these poles are going to be gray and this base is going to be gray so for that i'm just going to do it like this and then control plus there we go and i'm going to go into wireframe right there and then hold shift grab all of those you project from view do the same thing we did last time except this time we're going on the gray side so boom a s there we go and i'm gonna go to like this kind of gray pretty dark but also like has a tint of light in it and then let's go back to material preview and then this top part what color is that i think it it, it says it right here uh dark no that's the what is that the uh so this is gray I don't know what this is. Dark something. Yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> and this piece, we don't have a color for either, it looks like. Oh, yeah. Wait. Yellow. So this is yellow here and here. But then this says dark whatever here, which was already yellow. <laughs> All right. We're going with our, uh, our best guess on the last of them. I think I'm going to go with purple, guys. So L. Oh, gosh. Do I have to select all of those? <laughs> L, L, L. I'll be back, guys. All right, so I've got everything selected, and I think I want to go with purple just because it'll kind of match this uh, aesthetic that we got going on here. So we're going to try a few things. That's all we can really do, guys. Trial and error. So this is a pink uh, or like a pink purple. I think that's way too bright. Let's go to that darker purple right there. That looks all right as well. I wonder what like a really light gray, like kind of white would look like. Ooh, I think this actually might be the winner. This looks pretty good. Huh? I just don't know what color I would I would pick for that. So I think I'm gonna go with this or maybe that like futury blue white type thing. No, that matches too much to the uh, the cyan there. We'll try to go over again. All right. I think we're going with this right here, guys. I think it looks sick. Let me know what you think in the comments below, but that is going to wrap up today's video. If you did enjoy and you want to see more content like this, please make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a great day. Later.